much. I hope you really like it. This one's crazy. The first time I did one of these schools was in Philadelphia, and um, I'd never done a school presentation. I'd never spoken to kids in my life, and they had this massive two-story auditorium, and it felt like I was at like one of those TED conferences. And it, it, it's trial by fire. After that, I've been fine. Now, no matter, it, you can throw anything at me. But if your first time is going to be in front of 600 people on an IMAX screen, you know, get over your stage fright pretty quick. <laughs> Um, growing up, I didn't have cable or the internet. I was obsessed with Disney movies. So on this very rickety TV set, I just used to watch Disney movies, you know, 24 hours a day to the point that I was a very shiny, happy child. Where I can quote you Robin Hood and Alice in Wonderland and, and Sleeping Beauty by heart. When I went to college, I took a class on Grimm's fairy tales and uh, became obsessed with the fact that the original stories were all about, you know, darkness and murder and all the sort of insane things that we never see in the Disney sanitized versions, and I realized that my entire life was built on a lie. <laughs> Why could kids in the 1800s handle real, like, comedy and horror and, and lightness and darkness in their fairy tales, and all we get are princesses and pink, you know, merry princes at the end? So I wanted to tell my version of a fairy tale that was like the old ones. In the forest primeval, a school for good and evil, Two towers like twin heads, one for the good, one for the wicked. And then the question was, who's the villain? Like, who's the villain in the School for Good and Evil that they're all going to fight? Just the difference between this and other series is there is no outside villain. There is no Voldemort. There is no, no Darth Vader. Meaning, between Sophia, Agatha, and Tedros, one of those three people in the course of the story is the worst villain in the entire universe. Meaning, you might start rooting for a character who ends up being the force of all evil. And you might end up with your, your favorite character dying because you don't know they're the villain. And so the secret to the School for Good and Evil is there's a lot more gray and ambiguity because you can't necessarily pinpoint who the hero is and who the villain is from the beginning. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. And then when I read it, I thought it was amazing. Oh, that's good. So. My goal in life is to kind of show everybody that characters are not fixed. People change. People make wrong decisions. You might be a hero at one point in your life and then you may do something rotten to someone and then you're the villain. So it all depends on what you are at any given moment.